Okay, you're gonna need a tray, paper, cauliflower, you're gonna need some cumin powder, some olive oil, salt and pepper, which I have on hand just to my right. And you're gonna have your oven on around about, now I have burnt this before actually. So depending on your oven, um, I would say around about, oh, what do you think, 170? 170, let's try 170. You know, sometimes I've taken it up to 180, sometimes I've taken it up to 200. But let's start with 170 um, Celsius. I'm gonna grab some olive oil and I'm just gonna pour the olive oil over the cauliflower, just not pour, like drizzle. And then I want to do it over this side. Roll it around in that fat. Making sure everything's covered, which it is excellent. And then I want to add some cumin, around about half a teaspoon. It's not a lot of cumin, just half a teaspoon. Depending how big your cauliflower is, this is actually quite a small one. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the salt and pepper station and I'm going to salt and pepper this Treat the vegetable with respect. See how I'm salting it? Getting it all in there, rubbing it on. Same with the pepper. I mean, a lot of people do this with steak, right? They really season their steak well. It's the same with vegetables. They should be treated no other way. All right, into the oven. Preheated 170, just like that. I do at some point like halfway through the cooking is take another sheet of paper and put it over the top. And this just stops it from burning. But I'm not gonna do that yet, that's gonna be later. So this is gonna go into the oven for about 45 minutes on 170 and then I'm gonna put that paper on and I'm gonna cook it until my fork can go through very, very beautifully and with no hassle, like hassle-free fork situation in the cauliflower is what we want. Here am I, stir on the bottom of the tahini. Actually, you gotta do that. Tahini sits in my fridge or on the shelf. I actually like to keep it in the fridge, to be honest. Um, and it just kind of, just gets clunky down the bottom and all the oil on top. Stir it, so that's what I've been doing here. What makes this cauliflower next level is this dressing. And what makes it beyond just a baked whole cauliflower is all the isms that you put around it crunchy seeds that are roasted, um, salted, crunchy cashews, if you have any, just crumbled up, you know, in your hands, some, you know, fried onion from the supermarket, this crispy, yummy fried onion um, sprinkled all over it. Oh my goodness, a little bit more cumin, you know, put over it, so maybe some chili, um, some fresh coriander leaves if you have any, spring onion if you have any, that's what's gonna make it next level. So the sauce, it's a sauce I got taught a very, 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 very long time ago in a health retreat. I'm talking early 2000s, right? All right, that's good. Which consists of tahini. Now, I don't really know the quantity, but I would imagine, come on, Cynthia, get your act together. I would imagine a third of a, half a cup, lost me. Ask me's writing this down as I'm making it. Half a cup of unhulled tahini. And unhulled meaning the seed, is got all its isms on there and then it's crushed and made into a paste so about half a cup of that got some really nice coconut yogurt how much coconut yogurt oh i reckon about a cup last me yep. yep definitely a cup of coconut yogurt i need a pinch of cumin it's not a lot hey just like a, a nice pinch of cumin so first thing we need to do is salt and pepper this bad boy Got quite a large garlic clove. We're gonna grate it into here. So you want one whole lemon, right? Oh, this is good. This takes a bit of muscle. <sighs> okay. 
And now we need some maple. Maybe I reckon, let's start with one tablespoon of maple. As I'm whisking, it's getting thicker. Now at times I've had to add more water into this, but today I don't for some reason. Maybe the coconut yogurt was really runny. All right, now's the time to taste it. Now, what are you looking for? Well, you don't want it to taste like coconut yogurt and you don't want it to just taste like tahini. You want it to taste it, oh, that's nice. A mix of both, it needs a little bit more. Cumin, just another pinch. Not a lot, just a pinch. That's it. And our sauce is ready. Now, tip, look, it's getting really thick. If you think that it's just too thick and you're not getting this really kind of runny, kind of liquidy sauce, thick liquidy sauce, add a little bit of water and keep mixing. And as you keep mixing, it gets thicker and thicker and then you add a little bit more water. Today, I don't need to, I think it's the yogurt. The yogurt was super thin. Have another taste. Oh my God, that's amazing. Set it aside, wait for that to cook, and then we'll put it together. Next level, baked cauliflower is all the crunchy seeds, the deep fried onions, oh my God. You buy them from the supermarket, right? They come in a packet. Um, roasted cashews, salted cashews, a little bit sprinkle more cumin. If you've got spring onions, do it. If you've got coriander, sprinkle it on there as well. That's what's gonna bring this to the next level. It's been well and truly over an hour, which is totally fine. And this is the point when it comes to, if you steam or boil that whole cauliflower first and bake it, it's gonna be like 35 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever, da 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 da. It's not the point. You don't wash mushrooms because you wash the flavor away. So we don't boil cauliflower because it washes the flavor away. And that's why it takes time. What I did do, like I said in the beginning, was in about 45 minutes or 55 minutes, I pulled it out and I covered it with a little bit more baking paper just to stop the burning, um, the oven burning like the florets, like the beautiful flower of the cauliflower, do you know what I mean? And th that kind of helped it steam a bit, which is super cool. You could throw a couple of tablespoons of water in that tray. So you've got the paper, the cauliflower, a couple of tablespoons of water, 45 minutes after it's cooked, then put the baking paper on top and then chuck it back in the oven and that will create some really great moisture and steam the stalk of that cauliflower faster. You can do that, which is a cool chef's trick actually. Um, what else, what else, what else? Like I said in the beginning, I really like that when you can get the cauliflower with the leaves that wrap around it. I find that really protects it. And I actually think I really crunchy as well, which is awesome and super cool. Now with this, I threw a couple of weights on the paper, some salt that I've got there, um, which is now hot, so I've got to be careful just to hold this paper down because it was blowing away um, in the oven. Okay, we'll let it rest for a minute, and then we're gonna let it bathe in this incredible sauce that just makes life just lovely. So, and all the crunchiness, don't forget all the crunchiness I said in the beginning of this recipe, which is the, you know, roasted seeds, the roasted nuts, the different types of seeds, the crunchiness of the fried onion. So just stick that on there like that. Okay, I wanna show you something actually. Actually, 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 you want the fork to just go straight through like that. Okay, it's really important. Um, any kind of greenery, spring onions, coriander, parsley, you know, anything you like that you have in the fridge. I just got a little bit of parsley, which brings that greenness to the plate. And now we're just gonna sprinkle everything on. So this is what I do. The seeds over it. This is what makes this dish so delightful is all this crunch. I've got some roasted cashews. If you're allergic to nuts, just use the seeds. 
I might just crunch them in my hand like this. Get it on there. You want that beautiful bit of parsley. Just get that sauce. And that, my friends, is a really great way, I'm just mucking around with the sauce here, to use up a whole cauliflower, something different, I swear to God. In 2022, I baked this like at least once a week in Australia. And I had those leaves coming out and we just all ate it like a big roast dinner. And we have some beautiful greens on the side, we had some bread. It was delicious. So this is a real moment. This is something that you can do at home. This is very affordable, very tasty. Um, I don't have anything more to say about it except for eat it. These are a really nice veggie gluten-free fritter. And what's really great about them is there's like two veggies in there. Like, I'm like great in 400 different types of veggies, right? Okay, that was an effort. And a good effort at that, actually. Okay. Bit of parsley. I don't know, just like a handful, I reckon. Garlic powder and onion powder and baking. Is that, ba is that baking powder, yeah. that one? Okay, thanks, mate. Okay. Blob, bread, mills, all-purpose, gluten-free flour into the bowl. And then we've got some savoury yeast. I use Bob Bread Mills savoury yeast as well. Yay, love savoury yeast. It has that cheesy kind of flavour to it. I've got garlic powder. and onion powder. Now, look at that. The moisture's got to that, and that's why it's done that, but it's gonna, it's gonna dissolve when I put all this in there and squish it all up and do all the things so don't panic. And we've got like two teaspoons of baking powder. All right, so that's the dry ingredients. So give that a really good mix. Oh yeah, those lumps are coming out easily there. All right, we're gonna need some salt and pepper. Add all your herbs and watch the water that comes out of there, which is, uh, that's what we want. Add that to the mix. Now this is where I like to use my hands. Now you'll notice it's quite dry. And this is not every vegetable is made equal. We might have to add a little bit of water. You might not, but give it a really good mix and start to mush things up a bit. I think that's a word. So cooking terminology is mush. Now as this sits, it's going to get wetter and wetter. That's exactly what we want. And what I mean by wetter and wetter is just like I've squished with my hands. Oh my God, it feels amazing. And as I heat up my pan, this is going to relax a bit and more liquid's going to come out. This is a really good time to taste. Needs more salt. It needs more pepper for sure. Okay. Stir in. Perfect. That consistency is perfect. Taste it again. See if it, you can put chili flakes in there if you like. Um, it's up to you. Really simple recipe. Really great for kids' lunch boxes. Really great for dinner. Really good. Really great for lunch. Really great for brunch. Really great for everything. Really, it's just great. All right. Hot pan. Olive oil. Cook one side for about two to three minutes till it's golden brown. Flip it over and do the same thing again. Okay, this is nice and hot. I'm gonna use the little guard 
that comes with these pans so I don't burn myself. I can love that, man. Barbecue plate outside, like whatever you've got really. Um, now I made these the other day and I made them around about this big. So I'm gonna stick to my original plan of how I make these. Yeah, that's perfect. There's a few things what I love about this pan is number one, it's non-stick cast iron. Look at it, it's not even sticky. I just, every time I cook with it, I always go down this path. I want them crunchier. All right, so basically, I'm just gonna serve them. And I'm thinking like, how do I wanna eat them? And how do the kids wanna eat them? And I'm thinking they can eat them the same way as I do, <laughs> which they probably won't. My goddaughter loves coming in here and you know bringing me plates she makes at the pot pottery center and this is one of them i just think it's amazing how it's got a little bit of a dent there it was her style she said it's a bit of style but she made me all these amazing little plates and i just love it i just think it's gorgeous okay i've got a whole heap of stuff here that i'm just going to use because i have it um <laughs> and i know the kids don't like the chili but i'm putting it on there anyway but they can have it plain but i'll present it to them like that. I've got these amazing little tomatoes. What else do I have here? Um, yeah, give me that. Give me some parsley, coconut yogurt. You can do whatever you want. This is just what's in front of me and I'm just making this stuff up as I go because I can't help myself. So you just imagine, you're having brunch, you've got people over, it's Sunday or it's during the week or it's a kid's lunchbox or it's your lunch, it doesn't matter what it is. It's how you feel about how you want to eat it. So for me, I'm like coconut yogurt, a little bit of tomato, a little bit of chili, a little bit of parsley, maybe some lemon. I noticed some uh, half a lemon here, I'll grab that as well. Um, maybe some rose petals, I don't know. You do whatever you feel that you want to do and have this, have it in a burger, have it in a wrap, have it with a salad, whatever. I'm just gonna play. Okay, a little wedge of lemon. Now that is sophisticated. Yet, like I said, can go in a lunchbox, go on breakfast, brunch, wraps, salads. Oh my God, make them smaller, make them canapes. The world is your oyster. <laughs> Delicious. Bit of lemon juice. That's it think about omelettes I think about all the things I can put inside the omelette <laughs> this is an omelette for one so I don't need I don't want to fill it up too much I'm talking to myself right now um, for all the egg free people people that have really bad allergies to eggs anaphylactic run out you know come out in rashes all the things right this is for you and then you've got the people that don't want to eat eggs for personal reasons and ethical reasons this is for you and then you've got people like myself that have vegan friends, that are vegan. This is for them. 
It's such a great little recipe. The technique feels a little bit nerve wracking. I'm going to be honest with you because it's like, Jesus Christ, how am I going to flip that? You know, it's kind of, you kind of go down that path, but don't panic. It's organic. You'll be fine. Sometimes things, you know, go in a different direction, but it doesn't matter. I am cutting up a little bit of onion, a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of zucchini, some tomato, some avocado, and some spinach. And that spinach can be kale, it can be silver beet, it can be any leafy green that you have. First of all, look at the size of this avocado. Holy moly. <laughs> it's so big. It's crazy big. I just am just shocked of how big that is. I sent a photo to my mum. I'm like, mum, look how big this is. And she was just blown away. I'm excited about that. Okay, filling. Mushrooms, zucchini, onion, tomatoes, leafy greens, spinach, kale, chard, swiss, whatever. And avocado, I know, right, weird, but trust me. Black salt. It's very sulfury, not salty, sulfury. It smells like egg. I mean, you need to smell this. If this was smell vision oh my God, it is intense. It is really intense. Oh, I can't, it's too much. Hard tofu. People go to me, what does hard tofu feel like? It feels like this, it's hard. A little bit of cassava flour, really easy to get in Asian countries. And I've seen it in Australia, actually more so than ever before in my last trip home. And I've got some plant milk. Now, do I have everything? Have I forgotten something? Oh yeah, some turmeric powder. <laughs> okay, this is what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna smush it up with my hands. So I'm using around 200 grams of tofu. And now I want a little bit of cassava flour, just a little bit. And you know what I have forgotten is savory yeast. I'm gonna go about oh, three tablespoons maybe. And then I'm gonna add my black salt in there. Now I'm just gonna add a pinch. Kala namak, fine salt. It is the sulfury salt in the world that smells like eggs. Now I'm gonna season with my normal Himalayan salt for the saltiness and some pepper. And now I'm gonna use my hand. I'm gonna put turmeric in here actually for some color. Just a little bit of turmeric, like half a teaspoon. I'm gonna use my hands and I'm gonna mix this. And it's very dry. You can kind of see that, right? I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of plant milk. It can be any milk you like. Now you can kind of see it's getting a little bit more moist. Okay, now it's time to taste it to see if we have enough seasoning. Oh wow, that's really good. Those couple of pinches of that color namak salt is heavenly. All right, are you ready? I'm using a non-stick pan today. Yes I am, I don't normally use them but I have it for today because I need it for this. And I've tried on the barbecue plate and everywhere but this is the only thing that works. This is fun, so hot pan, Coconut oil or olive oil, actually, whatever you like. You do you, boo. I haven't added any seasoning to this yet. Just want this to cook down a little bit longer before I do. Now remember, you've tasted the egg, right? The egg part, which has got enough seasoning in there. God, that's really bloody good. Um, so I don't want to overload salt and pepper here. So just be mindful. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper and just a tiny bit of salt, like I said, just to pull out those lovely flavours of these isms in the pan. Now, one of the things I am going to add to this 
there's a little bit of fat. And I'm going to use coconut. Oh, should I? No, I'm going to use olive oil actually. It's just like a just a teaspoon in here. I'm going to use my hands once again just to mix it up. I'm going to get the tomatoes and put the tomatoes in. Epic. Now watch how I do this. Now, just going to turn down the heat. I'm just going to push this in like this. Cook this for about four minutes, I reckon. But look what I'm really doing with this spoon. Making holes in it. Pulling it together. This. This is when you lick the spoon. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's good. Next is I'm going to put some avocado in it. I know, don't freak out. You know who taught me this recipe? Chef Marde from Moxa. It's one of the places we go to on my Nourish retreat. I've got a Nourish culinary retreat here in Bali where I take you to all the most amazing places, to all the most amazing farms, to all the most amazing um, vegan places, to temples, to oh, farms, to Balinese cooking classes, to Jammu classes, and this is a part um, of one of the places we go to, and he taught me how to make this. Bit of spinach, not too much, just kind of rip it off, put it on. Just like that. Now here comes the flipping. Are you ready? Now you want to cook that other side for about four minutes. I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit. If you are in my cooking classes, or you didn't even know I had cooking classes, I have step-by-step -step cooking classes online, all plant-based. And um, just really gives you a really good insight of the techniques. So it's a lot slower than YouTube. Like I'm going through more conversation, there's more articulation, but it gives you a sense of, oh, that's what she means by four minutes, you know, because everyone's four minutes is different. Okay, so when I said don't make, don't overcook it because it goes hard, it's really starting to firm up now. So I've cooked that other side, right? And you know that flick that I did before? It wasn't perfect. Whatever, you do the best you can. If you don't want to flick it like that, grab a spatula or a spoon and turn over parts of it and just let go of any kind of thoughts and feelings that it's not working. Really important because you are allowed to do anything you like. You don't need to do the flick, you know what I'm saying? Let yourself off the hook. So that's been about four minutes. So now <laughs> I'm going to flick it again, but I'm going to flick half of it over just to get a little bit of a, there we go. Perfect. Now see what I'm doing? I'm half mooning it, half mooning it in the pan like this to make a really nice looking omelette moon. Okay, grab a plate. Okay, to the plate, and I'm just going to then flick it. Oh, didn't flick. Damn it, Cynthia. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, there is my omelette. And then I'm going to take some more avocado and slice. And now it's time to layer the avocado on the omelette. That's it. And what I like to do, just a little, is I like to have a little bit of balsamic just here just on the side, and then just a few sprouts on top. And that's it. Oh my God, I just wanna eat this right now. <laughs> let me know how you go. Really, truly, let me, know, let me know how you go. Don't be afraid to flick. Don't be afraid not to flick. 
seriously, just let go. Let go of all expectation. It's so important. My God, when I first flicked this, it landed on the floor. And I'm a chef and I should know better. No, that's not the truth. It just didn't work. See you next time.